Hey guys, this is Doug from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. We're continuing a series on the Minor Prophets. Today we're going to talk about the book of Nahum. Uh, that's right after Micah. It's just three little chapters. <clears throat> I want to remind you that um, about the spirals. Um, get on the website in the big picture book, there's a chapter about spirals. And it's just a way of understanding the word and, and um, taking the application that that, that applies to the situation at the moment. That is to say, Nahum is prophecy. It's prophecy about the city of Nineveh. It's prophecy about what is going to happen to the Jews in AD 70 and the destruction of, of Jerusalem. It's prophecy about America. It's prophecy about churchianity, the institutional church that, that we built. Basically, whenever you do X, your behavior X is going to bring consequence Y. You know, if behavior hex is positive, it's going to bring a positive consequence. If you obey, I'll lift you above the nations. If it's negative, it's a negative consequence. If you disobey, I'll curse your children. I'll curse everything. You'll eat your children, all kinds of bad things. Deuteronomy 28. Anyway, so it's just equational. If, if, if you do the kind of things that Nineveh, that he's mad at Nineveh for doing, well, then judgment's going to come on you too. That's all there is to it. And so specifically, right at the moment, I want you to focus on this as a prophecy about churchianity, about the institutional system that we've built and w what it looks like. And so kind of put your, uh, put your goggles, put your lenses on that, that focus on th that aspect of this. And uh, about America, it, it especially speaks to America, about the merchants and everything else you'll see. And uh, there's so many places in the word where America is not mentioned by name, but Revelation 18, I don't think that description fits anyone else except America and uh, in in the natural now on the spiritual level maybe it applies to churchianity or whatever so you just need to switch back and forth between the natural and the spiritual and 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 just take a careful look and see what spiral we're talking about what what role of the snowball does this apply to uh, everybody says history is circular well it's not circular there's always more of us to mess it up than last time it's spiral it's always getting bigger and bigger and worse and worse and worse anyway we're going to read uh, the whole book of Nahum, and I'll make some comments here and there. I'm reading from the NIV, whether you like it or not. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, go ahead and look it up in the, in the Hebrew, look it up in other translations, and just see if, contextually speaking, uh, I'm, I'm basically on the right track here. Um, but you take it up with the Lord. Uh, thanks, Lord. Thanks for this time. Please rule and reign. Please help, please help us to hear you really, really well. Please bind up anything of us or anything of the enemy that would get in the way. Lord, please let my words be truth. Let them land on ears that have that, that, that can hear, eyes that can see. Thank you, Lord. Please, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. <clears throat> Nahum chapter 1. An oracle, that means a word from the Lord, concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and maintains his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. That's a drought. I'm talking about whirlwinds, that's the tornadoes, uh, hurricanes, all of that stuff. Uh, he makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the blossoms of Lebanon fade. These are very green places. These are places where there should be lots of stuff growing. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. Those are earthquakes and volcanoes. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good. We've got this contrast back and forth here. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him. Okay? So, if you trust in Him, all of a sudden He gets all sweet and everything, and He's a refuge and a comfort and everything. If you don't trust in Him, if you look to man, if you look to the systems of man, you're in big trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him, but with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into darkness. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. 
They will be entangled among thorns and drunk from their wine. They will be consumed like dry stubble. From you, O Nineveh, has one come forth who plots evil against the Lord and counsels wickedness. This is false prophets of all kinds that come out uh, of the world of churchianity, of, of uh, the institutional systems of man, prophesying against the Lord, speaking lies against the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will be cut off and pass away. Although I have afflicted you, O Judah, I will afflict you no more. Okay, even the remnant, he's afflicted. His own people, he's afflicted. But he's saying, I'm not going to afflict you anymore because they're treating you bad. Now I will break their yoke from your neck and tear your shackles away. So he's saying, come out of her, my people. He's speaking freedom, liberty to those that have been shackled. The Lord has given a command concerning you, Nineveh. You will have no descendants to bear your name. Utterly made to go away. I will destroy the carved images and cast idols that are in the temple of your gods. I will prepare your grave, for you are vile. Look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, O Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. So he's saying to his children, to Judah, do what you said you would do. Offer your sacrifice, which is you, biblically speaking, New Testament. We are the sacrifice. Now he says, the feet of one who brings good news comes from the mountains. In Micah, we were talking about how his sheep dwell solitarily in the mountains, in the woods, afflicted by his rod. You know, the, his remnant is, out in the, is up in the mountains alone, his sheep. Uh, and they are the ones that proclaim peace when they gather. And they fulfill their vows, like the remnant in Revelation uh, uh, 14, the remnant. Okay, no more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. Chapter 2. An attacker advances against you, Nineveh. Guard the fortress. Watch the road. Brace yourselves. Marshal your strength. He's like, I dare you. Give it your best shot. I'm coming for you, sucker. The Lord will restore the splendor of Jacob like the splendor of Israel, though destroyers have laid them waste and have ruined their vines. So this remnant, now these are his people, he's talking about Jacob here, in the sense of his remnant, his people that are obeying. And Nineveh as the enemy that's going to be destroyed as he restores, uh, as he restores Israel. The shields of his soldiers are red. Now, um, the warriors are clad in scarlet. The metal on the chariots flashes on the day they are made ready. The spears of pine are brandished. The chariots storm through the streets, rushing back and forth through the squares. They look like flaming torches. They dart about like lightning. Okay, this is about Nineveh uh, the preparing, guarding the fortress and all this stuff. Nineveh was a huge city that was well fortified, that, that was really a bad place. The Jonah prophesied about earlier in the, in the Minor Prophets, and, but they continue, and they did eventually get completely destroyed. For a long time, we didn't even think there was a Nineveh until archaeologists found it. Um, anyway, here we're talking about their soldiers in scarlet and red, chariots flashing around all over the place. Okay, this is a prophetic word. And, and here in verse 4, it says, the chariots stormed through the streets, rushing back and forth through the squares. Okay, I believe he's seeing cars, not just chariots. I believe the Lord, they look like flaming torches, they dart about like lightning. Okay, they're going super fast, and they're lit up. I believe those are headlights. You know, I think it's on some spiral, he's talking about cars darting back and forth in the city. Uh, in America, if you look at America as Nineveh. Um, okay, he summons his picked troops, yet they stumble on their way. They dash to the city wall, the protective shield is put in place, the river gates are thrown open, and the palace collapses. It is decreed. Now, this is a dam that was released, and this eventually is how Nineveh gets uh, gets destroyed. Um, is that uh, uh, the river gates, the 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 flood was the river was dammed up, and then the dam removed, and it did, it flooded the city. And eventually, and this prophesies exactly how Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And we've we've archaeologically and whatever confirmed that that is that is how Nineveh was destroyed uh, in that spiral. Now, prophetically speaking. This dam 